With the month almost coming to an end, I wanted to use this video to talk about how my portfolio did for the month of March, specifically with dividends. So including how much I made, what companies paid me, where I'm at overall with how much I made this month and how that compares to where I was at at this exact point in time last year. Plus as a dividend investor, it's always really cool to go back and see that compounding interest and dividends work over the course of time, especially for someone like me that only invests $30 a week. Normally I don't go into detail on every single company that pays me every single month because more than likely I invest in too many dividend paying companies and I get paid by a lot of them every single month and this month was no different. This month I was paying 17 dividend checks, but I will go over one particular position that has gotten a bit more popular based on recent news and that position is the Schwab US Dividend Equity ETF or ticker symbol SCHD. Most of us at this point know that SCHD went through a modification of its holding, something they call a reconstitution, where it involved the addition and subtraction of particular companies that it monitors. You can actually see here how even their top 10 holdings have been changed with companies like Broadcom and Merck being completely removed from the ETF's umbrella altogether. I'll be honest, I'm a little bit embarrassed to admit this, but up until this point, I actually had no idea that SCHD went through these annual reconstitutions, but it makes sense because they want to maintain what the overall definition of their ETF is as far as the type of companies they track. And I'll be even more honest, at this point, I'm not really sure what this reconstitution is going to mean for me as an investor as far as if I'm going to invest more into it or if I'm going to invest less into it because I'm not super familiar with every single position that SCHD actually watches over. But again, assuming that they are making these modifications to maintain their overall definition, then at the least, I will continue to invest into them as frequently as I was in the past. Regardless, I invested about $75 into this position for the month of March after selling some older positions, which led me to make $2.95 in dividends, which for me isn't too bad. So besides SCHD, here are the 16 other positions that paid me dividends for the month of March. To start off the month, I got paid $1.92 from UPS, then $2.33 from ExxonMobil, followed by $4.97 from Target, $0.70 from Global X Super Dividend US ETF, $0.99 from Microsoft, $0.69 from Static Industrial, $1.69 from McDonald's, $1.94 from Realty Income, $1.21 from Main Street Capital, $2.29 from Home Depot, $0.87 from the S&P 500 High Dividend Low Volatility ETF, $2.46 from Global X NASDAQ 100 Cover Call ETF, ETF, 77 cents from the iShare Semiconductor ETF, 10 cents from Nvidia, $1.52 cents from Main Street Capital yet again, and $1.27 cents from Digital Realty Trust. That resulted in me making a grand total of $28.67 in passive income, which aside from being a new all-time high for me, is also a little above 30% more than what I made in March of last year. Also, my average payout at this point is $25.33, and my total dividends for the year so far is at $76, which is almost $20 more than after March of last year. Investing in dividend stocks and ETFs for me is great for the primary reason of seeing that passive income hit my portfolio every single month. And again, as somebody that's a long-term investor, I feel like it's very important to consistently track your monthly dividend portfolio. If anything, for the primary use of motivation, especially if you're someone like me that feels like they may not invest as much, you can continue to see that compound interest and how it increases over time just by investing over a long period of time. But if you're looking for more dividend positions to add to your portfolio or to invest more into, make sure you check out this video. I actually sold a pretty decent amount of positions that I probably shouldn't have been investing into in the first place, but I use that leftover money to invest in these three positions that I felt like would benefit my portfolio when it comes to overall growth history and overall profit history. So I hope you guys enjoyed that video and I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Until next time, as always, take care.